Hi. It's a high ponytail kind of day, isn't it? It sure is. So can you talk to me about this fight week? Does it feel different than your first one? And like, does it feel more normal? Um, yeah, I think, honestly, for my MMA career, you know, I spent so, so much time doing judo and so many times in the finals of big events and traveling the world. And it just became like, oh, this is my job. This is very normal. This is where I feel most at home. And it took me a little bit to feel like that in MMA. But I can say without a doubt now that I, I really feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with all the right people. And um, yeah, this is the path and I'm chasing a dream. Does it feel weird to you that the talk of this fight week is not your fight that you're about to <laughs> to embark in and not even the co-main event it's what happens after that's more the the dynamic yeah I mean I think it's kind of probably what fans want and in, in, in inevitable you know I want to fight for the title I want to be UFC champion and Juliana has been gifted uh, a title shot so I'm gonna smash Caitlin Skull and then I'll probably, ha I would happily walk out after I beat Caitlin and fight both of those girls. I think I can beat all three girls in the same night. I believe I'm the best in the world. And when you're the best in the world, you can't be stopped. Was there any disappointment when, y when you got this fight? No, I mean, I get it. I'm the new kid on the block. I still have some maybe pro proving of myself to do, but um, all good, all good. And I feel like I know the answer to this, but do you feel like you need to have like a highlight reel finish win to get that title shot? Um, I mean, the goal is always to go out there and dominate and still my will. Um, three hard rounds, one rounds at a time, one minute at a time, one exchange at a time, one breath at a time. But uh, of course, I'm looking for the TKO KO or submission. And I know everybody's asking about what you think of the, you know, the co-main event, not that that's not the thing, but what do you think of the woman that's standing in front of you? I think that Caitlin is a great, uh, a good fighter. I think she's well-rounded. You know, she's got a judo black belt. People have been talking to me about a jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, but I believe in my heart that I'm better everywhere. Um, on the feet, on the ground, grappling. It's going to be a long night for Caitlin. I know uh, you've asked about being the backup fighter. Has there been any uh, official word on that? Um, I haven't heard, like, officially from the UFC, but from what I understand, uh, I'll be stepping in if someone fucks up. <laughs> have you kind of prepared for that? Have you thought of game plans for, you know, the different? <coughs> I mean, my game plan doesn't really change, you know? Like, I focus on me, I do my thing, um, and good luck trying to stop it. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, over here. Um, I with one fight under your belt, I'm curious, what's it been like now? Because in the PFL, you don't really have to like lobby or call for fights. It's a mm -hmm. tournament. And now in the UFC, you have to do more than just win. You have to kind of promote, sell, and make the UFC want to give you these opportunities. So what's, I guess, been the, I guess the biggest difference now coming over to the UFC? Is it just that, or is there other stuff involved? I mean, it's just been a dream. You know, the UFC is um, the best in the biz for a reason. They are from the top down. Every employee is so professional, um, so welcoming. I really, I feel very at home here. And I guess there is a little bit more of the entertainment aspect to it, which is kind of giving me an opportunity to grow as well as an athlete and as a brand. Um, but my focus and my goal has always to be has been to be so good that they can't ignore me. So I just keep showing up, beating the shit out of girls, and that title will be mine soon enough. Well, you kind of touched upon it before your debut against Holly, but there obviously is that group of fight fans that only watch the UFC, and then you wanted to go out there and make them fans of you. So have you noticed that you've been uh, <laughs> recognized a lot more? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, just like little things you know like I was at the beach with my kids and some high school kid you know like I'm, we're talking like a young kid he's like oh are you Kayla Harrison and I was like yeah and he was like oh my god I just played you in UFC 5 you're so good and I was like oh my goodness <laughs> like yeah it's it's been really fun for me and uh, I'm just enjoying every minute of it you know I'm living my best life
And what do you make of Raquel saying that she even sort of prepared for you just in case, just given Juliana's history? I know. I was surprised to hear that. But I think there's something – I've got a vibe about it too. So that was smart of her. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You, can, you could have the rest of your life to prepare for me, and you're not going to be ready. Just two more quick ones. I know you talked about Ketlin a little bit earlier, but – Everyone that has beaten her in the UFC has gone on to fight for a title, essentially. So was sh when you joined the UFC, did you think about her at all? Were you like, I know eventually I'm going to have to, either when I win or before I win, kind of match up with her? Uh, to be honest with you, no. I mean, I really just... God bless all of these women, but they're all just like fill in the blank for me. It doesn't matter any day, any time, anywhere, um, anyone. I don't really care. And then Juliana was in here, and she said that Raquel isn't a good representation of the women's bantamweight division because she doesn't promote. She's not doing the things that will bring eyeballs to the division. So do you agree with Juliana, or is she just kind of selling the fight, or where do you think she, her mind's there? Um, you know, everyone has their own personality. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Uh, Juliana, I don't think anyone likes to hear her talk, so maybe she should take a page out of Rocky's book and shut the fuck up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have nothing but respect for Rocky. You know, she's just she's just a fighter. She's she didn't come over here to be famous or to talk shit, and she won a title, so she did it her way. Good for her. And can I just get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Khalil? Shama. <laughs> yeah, you know I gotta go for my boy. Um, yeah, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna do what Poetan does. Kayla, right over here. Speaking of Alex in that main event, you obviously have done a lot of work with him. Do you think that some of the judo that you've been able to drill with him could be a deciding factor in this fight? I mean, for sure. You know, he's definitely come a long way and he's extremely well-rounded. I think people really underestimate his grappling ability, and we may even have a little side bet going on about <laughs> who gets uh, striking or, you know, maybe my striking or maybe his grappling. We're, we're gonna, we have a little side bet. So I'm excited to see it. I know he's going to shine just like me. And for you, this is only your second fight with the UFC, but you seem to be loving the game more than ever. How has the fire within grown for you since joining the UFC? I think that it's just been able to, to sort of blossom. Yeah, you know, this is I, – I feel like I reached my ceiling, my ceiling at the other promotion, and I feel like I wasn't really challenged, and um, money's great, and, you know, all that stuff is awesome, but I, I love a challenge. I thrive under pressure. I enjoy the bright lights, and – I enjoy the pursuit of excellence. You know, for me, that journey, the journey to being the best I can possibly be is what keeps me going and, and wakes me up every day. And, I, like, my life is just so good. I get to wake up every day. You know, my kids are homeschooled. We, we spend the day together. I go train. I beat Mike Brown up. I come home. You know, I feed my emus. I go back to training. I beat Mike Brown up again. And, like, hang out with my kids. Like, my life is beautiful. So... That really um, nourishes me, nourishes my soul. It was a big risk. You know, I took a big leap of faith. I, I felt called, really, by God to be here. And um, I still feel that. I, I feel like I'm on the right path. And piggybacking off of what you just mentioned, I saw a post on Instagram where you said, this is what I was born to do, and now it's about more than me. You were talking about your kids. Yeah. You know, you're doing, you're doing amazing things, gr pr providing a great example to the kids. What yep. do you want them to take away from what you're doing in this fighting career that you're having right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just so important for me that my kids know it's okay to, to dream big and it's okay to take risks and it's okay to believe in yourself and it's okay to be a strong, confident, um, badass boy or girl and it's okay to um, stand strong on what you believe and who you are and, like... I want my kids to live their life on fire, you know? Every day is a gift. Every single day. I, you know, at our church, someone who was 35, one year older than me, just recently passed away, mother of two, beautiful soul. And I think about that a lot. Like, 
we're not here for forever. So make the most of it. Love the ones you love. Care deeply. Uh, act accordingly. And just, yeah, make, the, I don't know, squeeze the juice out of life. That's what I want them to do. Thank you. I've just got one more. I just was curious what your thoughts are and prediction for the Cyborg-Larissa Pacheco fight coming up. Um, I think Larissa will win. 